Um, yeah, look, I, I mean, it's a, it's a great honour to, to represent this footy club for such a long period of time. And yeah, 350 games sounds like a lot. It doesn't, at this stage, feel like a lot for some reason. It's, um, it's kind of all blended in, I think. I'll, I'll look back on it um, post-career and, and be really proud of being able to, to put on this Port Adelaide jumper for such a long period of time. But I've been so lucky to have so much support along the way. Um, and I wouldn't be out, you know, playing this weekend, 350, without so much support from the footy club, my family and friends. And yeah, it's a, it's a great honour. There's not many that have done it, but some of those that have have obviously done it across multiple clubs. How much more does it mean that you've been able to do it all here? Yeah, a lot. Um, I think mum and, and dad certainly raised me to be a, a loyal person, and and that's certainly a, a value I've tried to to, to hold pretty close. And and when you know Port Adelaide drafted me as a young kid, um, you know they took a, a chance on me, and um, we've we've been through a, a lot of down times, uh, and certainly um, some good good times as well, and hopefully continue to rise. But um, yeah, it's 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 been a, a great journey to be a part of this footy club, such a rich, rich history, and. I uh, loved every minute of being a Port Adelaide footballer, that's for sure. When you were weighing up what to do at the end of last year, I'm sure milestones aren't to be all and end all, but being so close to 350, was that any sort of extra character to play? Nah, not at all. Um, it didn't, didn't really cross my mind at all. It was, it was more about how much more could I give to this footy club and this group, and I still felt like I had some left to, to help this club and this playing group go forward to, to reach that ultimate goal, and, and we want to bring back that Premiership club, Premiership Cup to this footy club and, and this fan base and I uh, wanted to still be a part of that and felt like I still had more to give. Given that you had to weigh out the decision at the back end of last year, do you think you'll be in the same position at the end of this year? Is it safe to say that you think this will be your last year at the club? Those, those conversations and, and those thoughts will continue to go through my head. There's no doubt that's what happens when you get closer towards the end. And um, yeah, that, that's why you've got to have those people close to you. Um, to have those conversations and yeah there's no doubt that this year will be another one um, where I'll uh, we'll discuss that as the year goes on but we're in round two and there's still plenty more to go. You mentioned your parents and loyalty, I know you've spoken about this before but how, how much did your head turn when Geelong came to town and really kind of tried to sell and move back to Geelong and how, what went through your mind I mean as you reflect on 350 here was that's a bit of a sliding doors moment, how, how close was the decision there? Yeah very close. Um, like there was, a, it was a big decision to make, and um, it was one that that took a fair bit of time to sort of process all the information, go back home, be closer to family, and, and be part of the Geelong Footy Club, which is a great club, or uh, and was going well, obviously at the time, um, and we weren't going so well. But um, there was just so much here that you know, we, myself, Robbie, Jacko, like a lot of players, didn't want to walk away from. Like we were in well entrenched in this club to to try and move it forward and that's what we wanted to do and um you know that in in the end uh was why i wanted to stay to to help make this club um you know better again and get back up the ladder and and certainly along with those other boys and and my mum and and my family um you know were, were really happy with that decision and speaking of family when you lost your dad when you were younger before being drafted i mean that must have been a really hard hard thing to move states and I suppose reflecting 350 games later, it must be pretty special to kind of make that achievement, but also it must have been really hard at the time to, to move away from family and what was home. Yeah, 100%. Like, that was um, for sure one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, and it's a, it's a tricky one. I mean, as a, as a young um, you know, footballer growing up, you, all you want to do is play AFL. Um, and at that stage, you know, being in Torquay, it's like, well, it would be nice to stay in Victoria. Um, but to just get drafted was, was amazing and I still remember the day and sitting at home and listening, mum knew my number and she swore as soon as I got read out because I was coming over here and she left the room and come back and realised that my, um, my dream to play AFL just um, was achieved and, and yeah, she was, she was quite over the moon after that initial um, outburst, I guess. But um, yeah, look, it's, it was for sure a big challenge but as, as sort of time's gone on, it's... I sort of reflect and, and learn and sort of remember how much I've learned from dad and, and mum and um, all the times they, they take you to footy growing up and or cricket and, and just being there to support and I think that was the biggest thing that you know you sort of take away from is just the, 
the times that they're just there to support you along the way and, and that's kind of why this weekend is, is more about them and, and those that have been um, along for the journey that, that have helped me get here. Uh, there's, no, there's no way I'd be out playing out there this weekend without that support along the way. What about South Australia trap? What does the state mean to you? Does it, does it feel like home? You're talking a lot about Victoria. Yeah, like 100%. It's become a home away from home, that's for sure. Um, I never thought I'd be here for, for so long, for 18 years. I, rem I think when I got drafted, I'd be, I was like, yeah, two years and probably go back to Victoria. And, and for a lot of our guys, especially coming from Victoria, SA has just become home. And, um, you know, whether you're down on the coast or you're close to the city, but, you know, a lot of the boys are spread out. It's just become a a really good place to live and, and certainly the footy, footy club's been a, a great place to, to be a part of and, and we've sort of created our own home over here being away from interstate and, and SA's been a, a beautiful place to live. Uh, the surf's still too far away but um, we deal with that and the golf courses are nice so it's been good. Just on that 2012 decision, Ken touched on it post game and said almost, I'm sure if you had tongue in cheek and said man was safe for Adelaide. Hmm. Were you aware of, I guess, the bigger ramifications for the club for that decision? because? You know, it was the Tarps era of 19,000 crowd, you weren't winning much. If, if you left, were you aware of, you know, the, the wider ramifications of Cool, Probably not. Um, I think um, I knew, you know, the club, we were struggling as a footy club and, and you know, whether you're, you're struggling in life as an individual or you're struggling in business or wherever it is as a family, the only way to get through it is um, to go through it and, and not leave that situation. Um, and, you know, that's kind of you know, what we did, we just had to push through it and, and we had to change things. Ken come in, new fitness staff come in, some guys signed on um, and we just had to work our way through it. And fortunately enough, we, we started to turn things around and we're starting to continue to push forward. Adelaide Oval come along and, and um, you know, the club's in a better position. But yeah, you, you get to those situations in life, whether it's in business or um, in, in individual life, that, you know, the only way through a tough situation is to go through it. How much do you share that experience? Yeah, well, I think it's it's been a continued story, whether it's from myself or, or Ollie, who's come in, who's been in you know a, a challenging situation as well, leaving into state and um, all the chat around that, and then it's continued on with Zach and and you know other players that um, you know this footy club is is a great place to be. SA is a great place to be, and. Um, Football is a small part of our life um, and how can we make it more enjoyable at this footy club and make it a family club for, for guys to want to stay here and I think we've done a pretty good job that of, of that over the years and um, yeah, for, and that, that's not only the Vic guys but the, the SA guys and WA guys that have, um, you know, all around Australia that have come in here to, to make this place the way it is and it's not just the players, it's the coaching staff, the support staff, um, you know, the people all over the club, the fans that have just made it a place that you know players want to come and play here and stay here. When did South Australia start to feel like home for you? Whew, um, probably when I started having a bit of family move over, a little bit too. Um, but no, I think to be honest, like it was probably around the decision I um, made to stay here uh, in 2012 that you know I want to be here long term. Um, before that, it was always two year deals, uh, not knowing what was going to go on, but. After that, it was okay. This is this is home, um, and yeah, sort of settled in, built a house, and it's become a, a great place to live. So, how well placed are you to win a premiership this year? Do you think? Uh, look, I think right now we've we've had the preseason to give ourselves a great chance. We've added some pieces to give ourselves a great chance, and um, you know that's all we can do in terms of this stage. And now it's it sort of comes down to putting. Uh, those things into place game day and it's no, there's no doubt we're going to face challenges throughout the year um, but I think we're, we're certainly well placed to give ourselves a really good chance and we're going to come up against some great sides this year that you know we've already seen already that it's a pretty tough competition with Collingwood and Brisbane going zero and two after being in a granny that there's some, some sides on the rise so yeah look we, we've got to, everything's got to go right for us but I think we're well placed and our, our side's in a really good position to, to give it a good red, red hot crack. There's a shiny new wingman as well. Berg? <laughs> oh, mate. How are you enjoying that? <laughs> nah, it's been good. Uh, I think, you know, last year uh, I sort of didn't train there all pre-season and just sort of went there at the start of the year with, with some cracked ribs. doesn't help as well. But uh, to train there all pre-season, to learn basically where I started back in 07, to, to sort of come back to that role, um, 
it's it's very different to an inside mid role where you sort of got to learn a few new new things and it's been really good to to learn that over the preseason and car has been fantastic along with Kenny and uh, the rest of the mids group and yeah it's it's good fun to be out there with uh, with our exciting midfield that's for sure. How close were you to not coming back? Uh, honestly, I don't think it was very close. I was I was pretty committed to, to continue to go on and there's no other place I'd rather be than here. Was it always in your hands? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, like we had discussions during the year and with Kenny and, and Chris Davies and, um, you know, they've been amazing support for me and to give me that opportunity to, to make a decision is, is I'm incredibly grateful for that and, and hopefully I can repay it this year with a, with a good season and hopefully bring back a, uh, a Premiership Cup for this footy club. You made a grand final and yet in your first season obviously you haven't made one since. Did it take you a while to realise how hard they are to actually make? Bloody oath it is. I think I, I reckon I walked out of yeah the, the 07 season going, okay, this is not too bad. You, we walk into a granny in, in your first year and yeah, to not experience that again is has been challenging. We've been close a, a few times, but um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bloody hard one to win. What about the finals last year and how, how much does that drive you personally and the, and the team this year? Huge. Um, you know, I think to be so close and have our group um, be to be right there um, is great, but then, you know, where can we continue to get better to to push right to the end, because obviously to make finals, to then go you know, to a top four, to top two, to win a granny, there's still some big steps to take. We've obviously put some pieces in place to try and do that, and now now's the chance to implement that in game. And look, we've, we've given ourselves the best chance to, to do it this year, and, um, but the drive is 100% there. And I think, um, you know, I think if you watch the way Zach and Connor led on the weekend and what they've been doing all pre-season along with the younger guys, that these boys are taking the the club forward in the right direction and in, with the right attitude and for us senior guys to then come behind and support that, um, there's a, a huge amount of energy and motivation to, to continue to prove and give us a chance of winning there. Speaking of the leaders, the young leaders, do you reflect on your time as captain and what it meant to you in hindsight to, to wear that number one and also pass it on to, to the next generation? Yeah, there's no doubt that's been one of the, the highlights of, of my career in terms of um, what I've been proud to do and, and really grateful to do for this footy club is to wear that number one, number one jumper and that rich history of um, and the players that have represented this footy club wearing that wearing that number has been something that I hold close to my heart forever for sure and and there's no doubt that then passing what I've learnt on from like likes of Dom and Treaders and and these sort of guys to to TJ and then on to Connor and um, you know and then he'll pass it on is is kind of what it's about. It's not about you. Um, being this great captain, but what you learn to then pass on to someone else and then you can leave it in good hands again. And I think we're in a great place with Connor taking over. And just on your milestone, I'm sure you'd love to be playing at Adelaide Oval in front of your fans, but how does getting to run out of the G compare? Yeah, I mean, Adelaide Oval in front of our fans would be amazing. Uh, if there was anywhere after that, it would be the G in Victoria, obviously with family um, close by. I think I'll put in a re request for a few tickets this weekend um, and that'd be nice to have them there and, um, and to thank them for, for everything they've given me but um, yeah hopefully uh, get some uh, at some stage get a chance to thank the supporters as well at Adelaide Oval. And do we do this again in two years for Game 400? <laughs> <laughs> Shit we'll have to uh, just take it as, it as it comes at the moment but 400 yeah I mean it's a long way away we'll see how we go. Thanks. <laughs>